I'm Matt. And I'm Nate. And this is Not Quite Religious, a podcast where a Christian pastor and former evangelical turned atheist have conversations about faith, religion, philosophy, and life while drinking coffee. Uh, welcome to episode 15, where we talk about Christian nationalism, everyone's favorite topic, and possibly infinite trains. Because they're related, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we just keep continue to have conversations about infinity because I really think people misunderstand it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not drinking coffee this time. You're I'm, yeah, I've moved on to seltzer in our second. You know, we record two episodes typically at a time, which I think most of our listeners know by now. But why do I feel like I'm the only person that thinks seltzer is disgusting? Uh, I used to until I started working in restaurants and was sort of like peer pressured into seltzer because all the other cooks. We're drinking seltzer and totally converted to it. I, I guess, still like plain water, but I don't know. Is it acquired? It's acquired. I, I guess it so. must be. I, I don't know. The bubbles tickle my tongue, and it feels good. Is there a <laughs> difference between seltzer and, uh, you know, alka seltzer? It's the same thing, right? No, no, no. no. Seltzer is just carbonated water, and there's a difference between seltzer and tonic because tonic has, yeah. Oh, what's the chemical it has in it that gives it that weird flavor? <sighs> It's going to bother. I'm going to come up with it in a... <laughs> uh, the Christian nationalism chemical? <laughs> no, it's not aspartame. It's <laughs> asparatine. Okay. Some, I, someone can fact check me or, or the next episode. I'll be like, this is what it is. Um, yeah, so Christian nationalism, which we were talking about during the break. Uh, and I think we've skirted around in a lot of our podcasts. Um, but you had said, you know, I said, I want to talk about infinities. You're like, I was hoping about Christian nationalism. So I'm like, let's do that one. <laughs> yeah so spoiler we probably won't get to infinite trains yeah and i was commenting to nate which i'll just say now that my experience of where most of my christian where most of my evangelical friends are um let's just take the the mainline protestant out of it because they're clearly not christian nationalists but where most this what this is an evangelical issue so most of my evangelical friends i think are to some degree or another not christian nationalist um it's it's just a matter of how vocal they are about it Mm -hmm. and how they want to vocalize their opposition i also think that it's um it's worth probably defining what what exactly christian nationalism is um at least for this conversation what 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 we mean when we say Christian nationalism, because some of, some of my friends will insist, insist insist that they're, they're nationalists, but they're not white nationalists and they're not into theocracy. Mm -hmm. So they, they're drawing some sort of distinction and I won't speak for them, but it, you know, they're drawing a distinction between whatever they understand to be nationalism and, uh, and theocracy. So I'm curious how you, Define Christian nationalism. So I, yeah, I would say Christian nationalism for me is <clears throat> the movement by predominantly white, though there are other races who subscribe to it. Um, Christians who strongly believe that America was founded on Christian principles, that the Constitution and Declaration of Independence were divinely inspired, that the founders were like pillars of piety. Um, and that w- what we need to do as a nation is put God back in school, that school shootings and, um, what we see is like high inflation and gas prices are because we as a nation have taken 10 commandments out of courtrooms and, you know, stopped public prayer, which we haven't. <laughs> right. Um, and so their drive is to enforce their Christian morality and beliefs on everybody else. So I'm aware of people who would, um, in terms of trying to get to a definition of Christian nationalism for the sake of the rest of this discussion, um, I think there are some people, again, I'm trying my hardest not to misrepresent other people's positions, uh, who would say they're nationalists in, in the sense that they're for defined borders. So nationalism and 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 also that um they're anti uh um they're not multiculturalists they're not what they would call globalists in other words they believe that there is a um 
a glue that holds a culture together within within a physical border mm-hmm. and and that the, the for America that's the what they would call the judeo christian worldview, which by the way, I think judeo Christian is a suspect <laughs> idea um and and way too broad, but to play devil's advocate i guess or or just for just to make sure we're having a uh, a clearly defined discussion. So they would probably say that they're not into legislating every single piece of minute theology that they have. But maybe an example would be like um they're they maybe they think that swearing is a sin. Um but they wouldn't legislate like a no swearing rule on the mm-hmm. the entire country but things that they think align with basic uh christian uh morality things like a like abortion like um like marriage uh they think those things are you know having traditional marriage um uh having abortion be illegal defining it as murder like those things are like the bedrock of what is essentially American mm-hmm. culture, uh, and that without them there will be unrest, uh, because because our culture was not so much like founded on those things, but like just just is those things because of the way that it developed. Um, so I think if you su- you suggested that if if I were to suggest to them, like. How is that not just forcing your worldview yeah. on your neighbors? You know, how how is uh, how is that uh, essentially not theocracy? I I don't. I'd be curious how they would how they would answer that, but I don't know if that would be sort of soft peddling nationalism. But um, I think the central claim there is 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 there such a thing as um, a cultural glue called Judeo Christianity, and if there is, is it good? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, I. I don't know. I I think that that we probably have a working definition of Christian nationalism. Um, maybe that was all just semantic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think mine's probably a little harsher than yours, or more more black and white. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, Yours is not that different than theocracy. I don't think. Yeah. And I I think not much different than the vocal Christian. And that's hard because, like, I I know vocal Christians who are like, you know, this is not our kingdom. Stop. Right? Like, Jesus upends the paradigm. We're not new Israel. Right. Um, And Christians who are like, no, 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 no. Like, in the Old Testament, if they turned their face back to God and worshipped him, things went well. And they blame, those people blame most of the ills on our society right now um, as a reaction from God to our nation, you know, allowing transgender and being open and affirming and having same-sex marriage be okay. Um, and, and my rebuttal is like, the 50s effing sucked for black people, uh-huh. um, for gays, for you know, transgender, like transgender people didn't, they existed in 1930, 1940, 1950, 1820. They were just like terrified to accept and admit and tell other people who they were. Um, so it wasn't better for those people. Like, or or like, they didn't understand I mean, themselves that way because they're so, so culturally. Although you have like Alan Turing, who granted was English, not American, who literally breaks the Enigma code and allows us to finally understand German um, messages in World War II, granting us victory because we knew that Hitler thought we weren't going to invade Normandy. We were going to invade somewhere else, right? Alan Turing does that. Um, he's like the founder of, of modern computer science, an absolute genius, was homosexual. And so England castrated him chemically and he kills himself. Like, that is not a better society. Like... <laughs> Like, like, literally caused so much trauma to this genius who allowed the Allies to win World War II and, like, stop the Nazis. That they were like, no, 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 because you like penis instead of vagina, 
Like, we're going to take your balls off. <laughs> like, what world is that better? And I think Christian nationalists would say, no, no, no. Like, you don't understand by containing homosexuality, by not allowing our children to read books where a child has two dads, it's better. And I want to be like, F you. And I apologize to our listeners that I'm using lots of descript, colorful words, shall we say, although I'm trying to use anatomically appropriate words instead of their... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I should, I should say that I, I'm not a Christian nationalist and, and also that I'm probably l- even more of not a Christian nationalist or less sympathetic than uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of my evangelical brothers and sisters who, who, who comment against, um, Christian nationalism, but this new, this new strain, I'll call it like, it's always been there. I think in churches, like I've always heard strains of this in, in the, the church that I grew up in, not to say that they're saying these things now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Um, but strains of this in, in, in people that I've, uh, rubbed shoulders with, uh, over the years, um, but it seemed to be like always the the fringe. I felt like the main line of let's just take gay marriage for instance. the The main line of opposition to gay marriage was not, I mean, for years, not until recently. Uh, it it wasn't our society is Christian, and to be Christian is to be anti gay. Therefore, we shouldn't have gay marriage. That seems to be more and more the reasoning now, which is crazy. Not even 10 years ago, I think the reasoning was, uh, if a guy wants to be a bigot, it's the United States of America. He's allowed to be a bigot and and own a company. He doesn't have to serve a a wedding cake if it's against his conscience. Um, They weren't saying anything close to gay people can't exist or gay people can't get married. They were just saying, give me the right to not bake a cake if baking a cake is against my conscience, which is an argument I still think is sort of... It's weak, but it's not the same thing as as um, a post I saw a couple of weeks ago from from somebody uh, cheering the decision about uh, about Roe, saying let's keep going, and the, the, the Christian a Christian educator, uh, let's keep going, uh, let's uh, go after gay marriage next, just like openly. It's it's a revelation about how how different our society is. Um, than it was in 2015, because I don't think anybody would have had the gall to say it that way. So I, I want to say, I don't think they would have ago. the gall, but I think like you're saying that reasoning is different. I don't think it was. I think yeah. this has been the long play. And I don't want to get to, yeah. to row, but I think this, they were silent about their desire to have our society ruled by bigotry and fascism and dictators, but that's what they wanted all along. And, what, and only if it's their beliefs. Like, so there was the Supreme Court ruling that um, the football player could pray at the 50-yard line mm-hmm. at the end of football games. I'm sort of ambivalent about that because I believe people should be able to exercise their First Amendment rights to gather, you know, free speech, yep. practice their religion. It's also like a little sketchy to do at a school thing led by a staff member, especially in a football team where there's peer pressure. Like, there's a gray area there. Um, but, and the rebuttal from, from, from a lot of, like, the pushback I got was, like, if he was Muslim, would people be chairing that decision? Right? Like, like if I wanted to go bring the Satanic Bible to the 50-yard line of a Texas football game and chant at the end of the football game, thanking Satan for the win... Would Christians celebrate that as me being able to use my first God-given, like, rights of the Mm -hmm. First Amendment of the Constitution? Mm -hmm. Um, And I would say no, they wouldn't. Because to be consistent, okay, that guy can practice his religion of praying on the 50-yard line, then you have to leave homosexual marriage alone, same-sex marriage, whatever, even polygamy. Because you have to say, well, that's their God-given right to practice what they want to do, Um, and not to say that my worldview is a secular humanist leftist 
liberal atheist doesn't have inconsistencies. It clearly does. Like, no worldview is 100% logically consistent. But that disjoint to me is where, like, Christian nationalism gets dangerous. Because it's, it's, we need to protect ourselves and impose our worldview, but you can't have yours. This is exactly why I, I don't think that their real concern is consistency regarding the, um, regarding the First Amendment. Um, I don't know if all of them realize it. Maybe there are people who are pulling the strings, yes. such as you were suggesting, who totally, who totally understand. I, I might have had, in the last three years, some sort of veil lifted from me. What I can say from what I'm observing from out there is that people are less and less um, afraid than they than they would have been five years ago to straight up say. Like, I can imagine somebody listening to what you just said and their argument not being, no, your position's inconsistent. Because even as you were saying it, I was like, yeah, I'm sure that, that those things have to do with each other. But I don't want to get into that minutia mm-hmm. on, a, on a podcast here <laughs> because... Because it's so easy when I do that, my experience has been, it's so easy for people to dismiss me as a centrist. So I want to be very clear that I think Christian nationalism is evil. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. It's not Christian. That doesn't mean that the people who just heard that, that I don't love them, that I don't care for them, that if they called me in the middle of the night and said, <laughs> I'm in crisis, that I wouldn't hear them, that I wouldn't pray for them, that I wouldn't that they wouldn't be welcome at my church. All the people who just heard that and heard that I hate you, you're wrong. I don't hate you. But I think Christian nationalism is evil. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to get into like the minutia why I think the argument that you just made is flawed because I don't want to look like I'm in any way pandering to. But I, but I think if you said that to somebody who's going to go all the way and be super committed to Christian nationalism as an actual worldview... Not as something somebody could like accuse them of as a straw man, yeah. but actually like they they hold that. They would just say to you, no, a society where Muslims aren't allowed to pray is um, is the kind of society that America should be. Yeah. I don't know if they would say it's a better one, but they would say Islam and America don't fit. So we'll be better off as a country if um, if if Christians if if only Christians like do, do the prayer thing. And I think for a lot of people, that's not uncomfortable because they don't live around people that aren't Christian. Yeah. Like, you or, know, or they do like in, those people are just quiet because they know there are that. consequences or that. Right? right. So people like in Vermont where, um, it seems like, I don't know. You don't sit down and do the, the actual statistics of your relationships. But if you were to say, Matt, you know, Half the people that you run around with are uh, are gay. I feel like that wouldn't be that much of an exaggeration. It's yeah. probably more like twenty five percent. But like, as a Vermonter, I probably know more Muslims. I know more gay people. I know more transgender people. I know more non Christians than um, somebody from Texas. Right. So I can imagine it's easier if you're from Texas to just be like, "Why are we?" Why are we bending over backwards for three people? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's – that's not – to me, that's not an argument in their favor, but that's just, a not, that's just an observation. I would, I would like before this podcast ends – we might not have time. I, I, I would like to uh, have the chance to make a case for why Christian nationalism isn't Christian, but I don't think we have time for that. Well, I, I mean in, in some ways – you know, we were talking about this on the break too. That, and I, I got into it before my rant about Turing, I believe, where, you know, they're pulling these Old Testament principles, right? like the prophets in the Old Testament, like the cycle of Israel is like, we worship God, God blesses us, it's great, we forget about God, things start going south, we get conquered, um, God sends a prophet who's like, hey guys, it's going bad because we forgot about God, remember God. Uh, they go back to God, things get good again, the next generation forgets. And yeah. it's like this cycle. Um, and I think a lot of the Christian nationalists and even soft Christian nationalists, if, if that's a, a thing, would say, yeah. like, th- because we've turned away from God, th- the country's going south. 
Mm-hmm. And what we need to do is turn back to God and that'll get us, that'll get his blessing. Now, even when I was an evangelical pastor, I was able to see like, that's an Old Testament principle that it seems to, seems that Jesus and Paul blow out of the water, right? They're like, no, 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 no. my kingdom's not of this earth, right? Like, like Peter's like, let's get swords. And Jesus is like, okay, bring two to fight <laughs> off an entire legion of Romans <laughs> who like conquered the world and decimated everyone. And like, like, it's so clear. He was like, your swords don't matter. This is not the thing you think it is. We're not bringing back the state of Israel. And Christian nationalists, I think, theologically at least, are like, America is the new Israel. The Constitution and the Declaration of Independence are like addendums to the scripture that's somewhere between, you know, John 3 and Revelation, or 3 John, whatever, however you want to, (laughs) right? It's like, it should be tucked in there. And if we would just get back to worshiping God rightly and truly and bring prayer back into schools, and which again, it's never been not in schools, um, then things would be good again. And it just seems like, like it's, it's a law paradigm. And at the same time, these Christians are professing to live by grace. So it, it's like a, a mental disconnect for me there as well, theologically. Like, how can you say the Old Testament doesn't matter in the same way that it used to, right? Like, you don't have to go to the temple. You don't have to have sacrifices. You can wear blended cloth. You can eat shrimp again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Um, and say, like, those things don't matter, but this principle of the prophets does, even though Jesus is like, I, I didn't come to build an earthly kingdom. What are you doing? <laughs> it seems like you're disobeying by trying to build an earthly kingdom. Yeah. And I, and I would say that's probably the difference between... I, I, I don't like saying soft and hard Christian nationalists because I think soft Christian nationalists are just less direct. Um, but if there's a difference between those two things it's um it's like the difference between it's just a matter of how willing you are to impose christian quote unquote morality yeah politically so the soft christian nationalists if they exist are those who are saying there should be prayers in schools even though there is um we should have the Ten Commandments in the courtroom. We, sh- you know, uh, abortion should be banned. Uh, but we're going to try to make it happen democratically, versus the hard Christian nationalists are activists essentially, mm-hmm. um, not willing to uh, really engage in um, dialogue with those they disagree with, but more than willing to, to push it through. Yeah. Um, and it seems to me like for the longest time, the soft nationalists, um, we're, we're keeping, <laughs> we're effectively keeping the, uh, the hard nationalists from getting their way. And not so these days, the, the, the hard Christian nationalists are, are having their way. Yeah. Um, and, um, There's also people who have what they think is conservative theology, and I won't begrudge them that. Conservative evangelicals in the sense that they're conservative theologically who would would argue that America is multicultural, that it's not supposed to be a theocracy. We're not supposed to be legislating you know, Christian morality or, for, or forcing it upon, upon our neighbors. I have more people in that camp than I do. Um, in the hard Christian nationalist camp. Um, so I just wonder sometimes what the, the those evangelicals that I just mentioned who are like, no, I'm not for theocracy. I'm not for Christian nationalism. Um, where they're going to go, like who they're going to, who they're going to ally with, politically are they gonna are they gonna actually lock arms with uh people on the left in a in a political way despite the fact that their websites say that they won't marry gay people Mm -hmm. like they're in a hard place yeah i don't know um 
as opposed to those Christians who have already decided years ago that um, uh, that they will they will marry gay people that they'll lay uh, rainbow flags outside of their churches that um, you know call themselves open and affirming this is this is not a conflicting situation for them for them it's very it's very black and white and the lines are drawn yeah. who the enemy is yeah I don't know that's just the way my mind works around around these things the the way i look at it and why i say christian nationalism isn't christian because the question that doesn't seem like christian nationalists are asking which is the basic basic question they're asking about culture it's all about culture it's all about the culture wars but for me when jesus said the the greatest commandment is to love the lord your god with all your heart soul and mind and love your neighbor as yourself the that means that the fundamental christian questions are how do i best love god and how do i best love my neighbor and if you think that preventing your gay neighbors from being able to be married in, in America in 2022 is, uh, is the best way to love them, then those are the terms of the conversation. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's crazy. I think that if you say, yes, it is the best way to love them, then you're tacitly admitting that forcing your worldview on people is loving your neighbor if you already know that your worldview is the best one and is true. And in some weird way, it actually ends up being the most consistent position, which is the scary thing about where yeah, we're no, at. Yeah, right no, I, I agree it is, right? And so when I deconverted, I got a text um, and it didn't come up from from any number that I had in my phone, so... Uh, I had some blog followers and I had spoken at a bunch of churches in my pastoral career. And it said, we're praying for your destruction yeah. and your death because it's better for your kids to have no father than to have one who's going to lead them to hell. And in some ways, that's a very consistent worldview. Right. 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 Um, so, yeah, like I, I agree that this hard Christian nationalist has probably the most, well, I think, I mean, liberals have some too, but has a better sort of self-contained box of logic than the evangelicals that you know they're not I, I don't know what I'm but who would I rather go who would I rather go out for coffee with <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean yeah like the guy who's really logically consistent to to the point where he's 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 willing to say that oppressing a certain uh you know, a certain subset of the culture is, is better for his neighbor. Mm-hmm. It's like, wow, you're really logically consistent. <laughs> Great. I never want to talk to you. Yeah. I never want to be your friend. Sure. Um, if your logical consistency, if your rationalism leads to something that makes, you know, something that leaves loving your neighbor questionable, Maybe well, and maybe it, you need to find a new starting place. Yeah, is it loving your neighbor if your neighbor doesn't feel loved? Is it that another well, question? Not always. I mean, apply that to your to your children. It's not it's not always the case. But then even that argument's patronizing, right? Because <laughs> you're like these adults are like kids. They don't they right. don't know, but they think that. Yeah, those Christians actually think that they have the truth. Right. These other seculars people yeah. don't. So they are patronizing them already from the get go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I also think I have the truth, and you, y'all are wrong. So th- there's, I don't know if it's just patronizing. Um, hmm. You think I, you have? You think you have the truth? Like you possess it? Um, like you... In a sense that, like, my worldview is more correct than Christians, and that there is no, yeah, like deity who sacrificed himself and rose again, so that those who believe in him with their heart and, you know, confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord will go to heaven. Yeah. Like you think that truth claim is wrong, but that's, I think that's different than like, you think your truth claim makes more sense, but I think that's different than thinking you. Yeah, I guess you possess. Yeah. I, I, I guess I see what you're saying. Um, so to sort of go back to like where you said, where do these conservative Christians who would, Say they believe the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, that marriage is between one man and one woman for one lifetime. Um, 
divorce for the most part is frowned upon and sinful, Mm -hmm. except for the two cases given in the New Testament. Um, One is an unbelieving spouse leaves and the other is adultery. Mm -hmm. Um, But they're not Christian nationalists. Where do they, where do they go? And my answer would be Bonhoeffer was murdered. Hmm. Yeah. Tease that out. (laughs) I I I mean, so, so like after Nazi Germany fell and it always comes back to Nazis, right? (laughs) What's the, 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 what's the internet principle that it always eventually goes to Nazis? (laughs) Um, when people interviewed Germans, most of them were not Nazis. But somehow mm-hmm. Nazis came to power and ruled and got these people to willfully turn a blind eye um, yep. to their principles. Right? And say, oh, no, 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 like the, the um, menta- mentally and physically disabled people that were taken away, were, they, were, they were taken to a better place. Right, Auschwitz isn't burning people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, like just completely had to, um, and so Christians in that society either have to say Nazis, you're wrong, or say nothing, mm-hmm. um, or some of them fully accepting Nazi doctrine and being like, yeah, this is Christian principle. Yep. Right, like Jewish people are a pox upon us. Um, you know, they killed Jesus, this is completely justified. Mm -hmm. If that was a small minority of Christian churches, well, what were the others doing? (laughs) Right, right. The small, if it's a small minority, that fact made no difference historically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, the the Pope didn't excommunicate Himmler. Right. He was still allowed to take communion. So the Catholic Church was looking at what was happening and like, yeah, it's probably not worth not allowing him to take communion. Also the, what all, the? Also the state Lutheran <laughs> Church. Yeah. Right, So, the, which is why the Barman Declaration was made with uh, Karl Barth, who was a, actually not a Lutheran, but a Swiss uh, Reformed theologian. Um, but I believe Bonhoeffer, who you mentioned, was also a part of that. Um, it was, uh, they called themselves the Confessing Church, which... Is awesome because, like, the more appropriate title would have been the dissenting church. Because <laughs> officially, the Lutheran, the German Lutheran state church was like, we have to go with, with Hitler. I forget the exact line of argumentation. I think it had something to do with Romans 13. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, but. Um, Divine right of kings. Right. Uh, but, uh, but, there, but there was something that was anti Hitler called. The Confessing Church. Now, within the Confessing Church, interestingly enough, there were different ideas about how much sure. dissent you should do. Bonhoeffer was the one who was willing. Bonhoeffer was part of a conspiracy to kill Hitler. Yeah. So that's <laughs> where he was. Yeah. Um, but there's a debate about whether Bonhoeffer was theologically orthodox or not. It's actually not clear. From, from what we have, there's not enough evidence to say he was heterodox. Mm-hmm. Like... Bonhoeffer confirmed the resurrection and and uh, and uh, most Lutheran doctrines. Same, Bart was probably a little more heterodox. Anyway, Bart's not the point. The point is Bonhoeffer. <laughs> that for him there was no rationalizing what Hitler was doing, even if some people could make the argument mm. that there was there was something Christian about it. Bonhoeffer said there's nothing Christian about it. Yeah. You know why? Because it's totalitarianism. Mm. Not just because it's Nazism. Yeah. Not just because there's genocide, which Bonhoeffer opposed (laughs) Hitler before he knew there was genocide. Yeah. It's like, it's the Antichrist. And not the Antichrist in the mythical sense, but the Antichrist in the sense that um, there's no, in Hitler's world, where he's the Fuhrer, there is no room for dissent. And in a culture where there's no room for dissent, there's no room for Jesus. Mm. I feel like I didn't get to say, and maybe I did say, hard turn. I feel like I didn't get to. That I love that uh, Bonhoeffer and Bart and the the German Lutheran pastors who were part of the um, confessing church called it the confessing church instead of the dissenting church. 
Because the dissenting church would have been accurate. Mm -hmm. The confessing church is like so bold because the implication is like the official church is not confessing. Yeah. They're not in line with Jesus. They're not in line with Luther. (laughs) They're not in line with Protestantism. They're, they're none of it. And, um, I, I long for an orthodox expression of Christianity to be able to stand up in this political environment and say, those people are not confessing Christians. Not not to say anything about the state of their souls. Don't confuse those two things. Yeah. We're confessing Christians, and this is why. Because this is what loving your neighbor looks like. And I know that sounds smug and... <laughs> And uh, and all sorts of uh, um, sanctimonious. I, I, I can see how somebody could look at it that way if they disagree with me. But the point I'm really just trying to make is like, in this political environment, what does it what does it look like to love your neighbor? Is is the question and and. Uh, if people feel forced to the side of Christian nationalism as a response to that question, then um, me and that person see the world very differently. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the point. Not not to say that I'm morally better than you. If in the end you're right and I'm wrong, then you die on the hill that you die on, right? Yeah. So that's that's not sanctimony, I don't think. I think it's probably a pretty good place to end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. Love you.